What's up guys, National Master Nelson Lopez, and today I'm gonna to talk about three things that you have to understand at the end of a chess game. But first of all, what exactly is the end game in chess? There's not a crystal clear definition that everyone would agree to, but basically it's when most of the pieces are off the board. And when I say pieces, I'm specifically talking about queens, rooks, knights, and bishops, not really pawns. This position right now on the board is not an end game because obviously there's still queens, there's still rooks, knights, there's a lot of pieces left. It's a general rule of thumb, when the queens come off, that's when you're getting close to the end game. So this position right here can very quickly turn from a middle game to an end game. If white captures the queen, black recaptures, and then all these pieces can get traded off, and boom, we now are in an end game. So the first thing about an end game that you have to understand is that the king needs to become active. So at the start of a chess game, if you were to try to activate your king, like go king e2, and then king d3, and then king c4, you're going to get destroyed. I mean, you're going to get checkmated in a few moves. I mean, black has just so many pieces, this would be terrible for you to move your king there, right? But in a position like this, if you were to move your king, you know, over here, let's say, put it on d5, is there an easy way for black to checkmate you with just a knight and a couple pawns? No, your king's going to be totally safe. So at the end of the game... Your king becomes a very valuable piece that you have to use to help you win the game. If you just leave your king sit on the back rank the whole time, you're probably going to lose if your opponent is going to actually use his king to help out. So if I'm white, I'm going to start thinking about how can I move my king off the back rank? I'm going to go to d2, d3, and then maybe to c4 or e4 and either go for, for these pawns or maybe this pawn. Same thing, black should be thinking king f8, king e7, probably a d6 where he can defend his pawn and, and eventually maybe defend these guys if he needs to. So you have to use your king at the end of the game. All right, the second principle in the end game is that pawns are so much more valuable than they are at the start of the game. Okay, at the start of the game, you can play a gambit where you give away a pawn or two and it doesn't mean anything. Like you're gonna have lots of good chances to get checkmate. The game is a long way from over. The pawns aren't that valuable at the beginning of the game, so if you need to sacrifice one to, to gain an initiative, it's totally fine to do that. But when you get to the end of the game, pawns are the most important thing. Because if you're able to get a pawn to the back rank, what happens? You get a queen. And a queen at this stage in the game, I mean, it's game over, right? Whoever gets a queen first is going to win. So for example, if white moves his knight to, to b5, threatening a7, and black does some move like knight e6, that's a blunder because you just gave away a pawn at the end of the game. So it's really important that you don't just waste pawns at the end of the game. Now that leads me into the third principle, which is past pawns are the most important of all. What is a past pawn? A past pawn is simply a pawn that cannot be taken by any other pawns on its way to the back rank. So this pawn on d3 is considered a past pawn for white because there are no black pawns that can capture it on the way to the back rank. C4 is not a pass pawn because if it tries to move to C5, black's just gonna take it. So it's not a pass pawn. Same thing with this guy on E3. Eventually, when it gets to right here on E6, this guy's just gonna take it. So it's not a pass pawn. Black actually has a pass pawn on A7, and you might say, well, it's not gonna be able to get there because the king is blocking it. Well, the king is blocking it, but it's still considered a pass pawn because the definition of a pass pawn is only if another pawn cannot capture it. Okay, so no, none of white's pawns can stop that guy. So it's still considered a pass pawn. And that's important because if white ever tries to like move their king over here to do something in the center of the board, well, this pawn's just gonna have a clear path to A1 and it's wee 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 all the way home at that point. All right, the next thing I wanna point out is that sometimes you don't have pass pawns, but you can make pass pawns. So in this position right now, White doesn't have any pass pawns, and black doesn't have any pass pawns. However, they both can make pass pawns very easily. So if it's white's turn, he simply moves his pawn up, and he's threatening to go to h7, and then h8 can get a queen. So what's black going to have to do? Well, black's going to have to capture the pawn. But then after white recaptures, guess what? We got a pass pawn. This guy's ready to go get a queen. Black can also make a pass pawn on this side by playing a5. He's going to go past, so white has to capture, and then black's got a clear path to a1. Now, it's probably pretty obvious, but white's pass pawn is much better than black's pass pawn for the simple reason that it's closer to becoming a queen, right? Only two moves, and black needs one, two, three, four moves. So if they're going to race, white's going to win, get a queen, and that queen is going to stop this guy from, from getting to A1. 
So not only do you have to pay attention to pass pawns, you have to pay attention to how far advanced the pass pawns are. So I want to show you this very tricky position and ask you the simple question, who do you think is better in this position? So just to recap, white is going this way with his pawns and black is going this way with his pawns. And I want you to take five seconds and tell me, is white or black winning in this position if it's white to move? So before I tell you the answer, I want to tell you what when I first saw this position, what I thought to myself. I thought, okay, I'm going to try to get my king over to help out my pawns. But every time I do that, black's going to just simply block me off with his king, right? Every time I move, he's going to move. So he's, he's going to go here, he's going to go here, he's going to go here. And then eventually, he's just going to come over here and take all my pawns. And black's going to win. He's got three pawns. I'm going to have nothing. That's what I thought when I first saw the position. But actually, white has a way to win. And it has to do with the fact that his pawns are further advanced than black's pawns. And because of that, you can do a little trick to win the game. I'll give you a hint. Somehow you have to create a pass pawn out of these three against these three. So go ahead and if you want to pause the video again, see if you can figure out what that move is. All right, if you said pawn to b6, you would be correct. Just real quick, I want to show if you move one of the side pawns, black can just simply move his up. And then if you move it, it's going to be blocked off if you capture you can't get through. They're blocked off and then black's gonna win. But if you play b6, you're simply threatening to capture one of these pawns. So if he tries to move one up, you're just gonna take it and go get a queen. So that's not an option for black. So the only thing he can do is try to capture your pawn and it doesn't matter which way. Let's say he captures this way. Now you notice that this guy on a5 is pretty close to being a passed pawn, right? Like you, you could almost move there and then get by. Problem is when you move there, this pawn's gonna take you. So if you can somehow get rid of this pawn right here, this guy's home free. So c6 is a sacrifice, but it's worth it because after he captures you, then you can, boom, you play a6, that pawn's no longer there, and this guy's only two spaces away from getting a queen, and these guys have a long way to go. The other thing that black can try to do is capture this pawn, but then he's letting you just simply capture him, and again, you're getting a queen before this guy is. So next time you find yourself in an endgame, make sure you remember those three important principles. Activate your king. Pawns are very important. And pass pawns are the most important of all. As always, thanks for watching and take care.